And uh, we're here today with uh, Craig Smith of Vision Engineering, and we're going to be looking at uh, three different microscopes from Vision Engineering, right? Yes, what we're looking at today are stereo microscope lines. Stereo microscopes, okay. We, we're involved in all things optical inspection, but this is specifically stereo. They're working scopes for people that would be manipulating things underneath them or something of that nature, spending a lot of time. <clears throat> the scope far down on your right is a Greeno style. Okay. Very, very common. Uh, from the front, you'll see it has a very distinct V shape to it. And it's kind of a compact, kind of squat little body. And if you'd uh, like to go ahead and okay, lean so in there I, and see if you can get that set up. So, first of all, i got to kind of get yeah. these to... Uh, My eye space, you might be a little bit wider than uh, okay, okay. what yours so is. So, basically, I'm looking to align. Okay, so i got a stereo vision here. Okay. There you go. Oh, that's not too bad. And then uh, my focus <laughs> is over here, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Either side. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Easy. And once you get it in focus, if you'd just be so kind as to stay there for eight hours, <laughs> you can see what the process would be of actually using <laughs> that over a because, shift. Because you know I love leaning over for, <laughs> for eight hours yeah. a day. <laughs> you look good doing it. Yeah, yeah. So that becomes so er kind of er er ergonomically these these are challenged. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you're only going to use it for a short period of time, every couple of days or so, you know it's fine for the right application. That's really what becomes important: is finding the right scope for the right application. Okay. And it's possibly not even a microscope. Maybe a bench magnifier would do it as well. And that would be very ergonomic and good for the operator. The balance there is: does that have enough magnification? It's finding the balance for the the right application that's important. Okay, so for something like this, this is not a tool that you would want to be soldering under all day long or inspecting under all day long, just simply because of the, the hunched over posi positions. I don't okay. think you were there for 30 seconds. I think you were happy <laughs> yeah, you know, to I, lean I, back and have I can, the conversation. I, can, I definitely can. I can feel it in the back of my neck. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and there's a step up from this, which is a little bit better ergonomically, right? Yeah. This becomes uh, the next step in the line. This is a CMO style scope or CMO. This is our SX80. And what you'll see, it's characterized by a longer, straighter body. This has an added feature of having uh, tiltable eyepieces. Typically, it would have fixed eyepieces similar to the uh, SX45 that you just looked at. So you can kind of better position those and get it set up. So if you'd like to go ahead and take a look at yeah, that. So this is, I mean, already I can, I can, I'm not hunched over. I can sit up a little bit taller. Big uh, benefit as yeah. far as your back, although you, yeah. you do see, um, well, I see at this point, you are starting to hunch over. Anyways, although yeah. just not to the extent but, that was required for yeah, I mean this feels game. this feels fairly this feels fairly reasonable. I mean better better than the other one for sure. Just get my line. Okay, yeah. Being yeah. that you're more upright, you'd be in a position that you could work underneath the scope, soldering or something of that nature for a much longer period of time yeah. before it would become. So is the, is the only is is the main advantage of this one? I mean, they both do the same thing, but just that it's I don't know it's adjustability, so to speak. I mean, yes, primarily now. Being that it's a CMO style, that's also considered infinity corrected. That's to say that both light paths are parallel inside the scope. Okay. So we can actually add accessories such as a camera tube or something like that at a later time because you have that vertical stack that's, again, parallel. Okay. So we've, we've gone from something that's not very ergonomic at all to something that you could conceivably, and I'm sure it's probably something like this that you might see on on a, uh, an electronics line where maybe they're having to do solder. I mean, this would be a, a, a kind of a typical microscope, a stereo microscope you might see? Cor correct. And okay. as I say, we're moving up in the line and not surprisingly, we're moving up in price point as well as we do that. Okay. Well, before we move on, there's one last thing we should really address with the two scopes that we've looked at so far. And it's something that's not often really discussed with microscopes because it's a limitation that all stereo microscopes have by design. Um, and that is the eyepieces. If we actually pull out this eyepiece, take a look at that real quick, you'll see that that represents a sizable piece of glass. Sure. Okay. Um, but what the operator actually gets relative to information to their pupil is significantly different. The actual exit pupil of all traditional microscopes is only about three millimeters. Oh, right, and when okay. you're using the scope, your pupil will dilate up to five millimeters, a significant difference. And that's really why you have to spend so much time adjusting the scope as well. You had to move those eyepieces back right, and right, forth right. so that you match that two millimeter, three millimeter exit pupil to your pupil in your eye. And if you moved while you were using the scope, you lost the image completely, which is really unfortunate to have happen if you're doing something such as soldering. <laughs> you <True. laughs> kind of like to know what you're touching. So right, right. That's, that's truly something to, to look at relative to the, that style of scope. Okay, moving on, this, is, uh, this becomes our flagship product. 
This also is a CMO style scope. We've got a longer stacked body, as you can see as you're in front of it. And it may not look like a stereo microscope, but it is, in fact, purely a stereo microscope. There's nothing being digitally processed or anything else. Okay, so this, this isn't a video screen I'm looking at. Correct. It's Correct. all optical. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you get far enough back from the scope, you'll actually see that it does have the two eye paths that oh, make yep, it stereo. Yep. I can it's see right it. and the left. Yep. And if you'll just kind of lean in and take a look. Well, that's really, really clear display, I'll tell you that much. Uh, interesting. Uh, so this is, this is optical. Yes. Wow. Not digital at all. So right. if you move your hand, you have instant feedback. Which is kind of funky because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what feels like I'm looking at a screen, and yet it is, it is definitely stereo. Mm -hmm. Wow. Trip. So as opposed to a camera that historically cameras would be ergonomic, but right. the camera is going to be mono. And based on the speed of the camera, you might have a lag time as you try and do something underneath the scope. Huh. This being purely optical, if you move your fingernail, you see that happen. You get operator feedback. Yeah. The other thing that you'll notice is you've kind of moved your head in and out kind of playing with it. Yeah. You have great freedom of posture as positioning. It's giving you good posture. Your back is straight. Your neck is erect. And you know you can move in and out as needed. You have peripheral vision. You can look around and see the rest of the world. Your pupils aren't dilating as you're using the scope. Yeah. And I would suggest if you needed to, you could sit here and look at that for a fair amount of time where the other two would be fatiguing well, at best. I, I would say that <clears throat> as, at worst. As, as somebody who doesn't use this and just as, as a casual observer, I would say that it seems like it has the benefits of let's say, a, a camera-based system in that mm -hmm. you've got essentially, a, let's say, call it a screen for lack of a better mm -hmm. word, but because it's an optical system, I'm still getting the full benefits of stereo, stereo vision. So that's kind of, a, kind of a trip. Not only that, but there's actually, as you notice, there's no, no uh, adjustments to make to the eyepieces. So when you came up to the scope, you're instantly using the scope. Right. Um, you don't have to make physical contact with it, with the eye cups that you might a traditional microscope. You could go from one operator to another to say, hey, take a look at this. I'm looking at this on the scope, and there's not that lag time of, well, let me get the pieces uh, set so that I can see through the scope. Mm -hmm. You can go from person. In fact, somebody can likely look over your shoulder right now and get a pretty good idea of what you're looking at. Right. That's interesting. And obviously, uh, you know, focus, all the same stuff you would get with a regular microscope. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, functionality-wise, it works functionally the same as a stereo microscope. The difference is you've got this cool kind of screen that you're exactly. looking at. Okay. Okay. Um, and I've noticed also doesn't see, I mean, we're in pretty brightly lit studio here, and I noticed that still no problem with, um, with making out, you know, making out detail. It's still nice and bright. That's Again, it's purely trip. optical, so there's, yeah. there's no loss of light levels. There's no washout that you might get with a camera. There's nothing to try and tweak to make it a little right. bit better. It is what it was, and it's going to stay that way. Who, and, who, what, is the, what is the kind of the the target market for this? Who, who is most interested in this type of uh, this type, type of setup? So this is exactly what we kind of hit on. Somebody that's going to sit in front of the scope for long periods of time. You know, if you had to do an eight-hour shift and you were working on, again, we talked about soldering. If you're going to be working on circuit boards or something, this is something that you can kind of reposition yourself without losing the image. You can be in a comfortable position. You can adjust your chair or the scope. And being a, a, a modular design, we talked about the infinity correction. We could put in camera attachments or uh, step magnifiers to increase the magnification or change the working distance. It becomes a modular design that we can... Uh, configure accordingly for the operator's needs. Yeah, interesting. Oh, that's very, that's very cool. Very cool. You can prove my point by just standing there for another, or sitting there for another <laughs> yeah, eight yeah, hours yeah, yeah. and yeah. see how you feel. <laughs> or we can actually, maybe we could pull one of the other scopes back and I'll use the Evo and you can use the traditional yeah, scope yeah. and we'll, we'll kind of do a blink test as to the, who can be there longest. So, so this is the, the, the Lynx Evo. Correct. It's uh, kind of the, 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 the top of the line of your stereo, stereo microscope products. Uh, frame size, is this the smallest, largest? Uh, uh, the head is the head. It's okay. available and when we say the head, it's the structure that we're looking at here. Okay. We do have different stands that are available for okay. it, different configurations, again, different lenses for different working distances, magnification. It's it's a modular design that we can fit to the operator or the customer's needs. Okay, well, perfect. Well, Lynx Evo from uh, Vision Engineering, Craig Smith. Uh, Thank you so much. Appreciate you showing us to it. My pleasure.